Men. Ugh, am I right? It's weird that creepy men keep getting away with stupid things like this. Here is a painting from the 19th century that perfectly illustrates the universal hey babe scenario. But is this really all there is to it? Or does this work from German painter Berthold Walze have something more to say? Let's get into it. Berthold Walze is by no means a very revered painter in European history. Born in 1829 in the German town of Havelberg, most of Walze's life remains undocumented. What we do know about him is that he was a professor at the Weimar Saxon Grand Ducal Art School and published his work in the Gattenlob, an illustrated weekly newspaper. Walze's approach may seem traditional at first. After all, he painted genre pictures that were neither as high-minded as historical or mythological works, nor as revolutionary as realist or abstract works. But in the 1870s, the school began turning more and more toward nature for inspiration, which affected its genre and landscape painting habits. And Walze himself also took a new direction, putting more thought into his domestic artworks that would later be categorized as problem pieces. It was during this period that he painted this, The Irritating Gentleman. The painting shows a girl dressed in all black sitting in a train. And who could miss the gentleman who leans over to explain his virtues to her? One can almost envision him saying, why don't you try smiling? The first interesting thing is the painter's conscious decision to set the scene in a train cabin. Maybe this is something he witnessed firsthand on a train ride, or maybe it was a story he heard from someone he knew. On the other hand, it could be a great feat of the imagination because train is a great visual representation of movement and hence change. And things have changed for our young protagonist if you look closely. For starters, she is wearing all black. Judging not only by her attire but also her demeanor, funeral seems like a very plausible explanation. The black skirt and black coat with a black blouse and black buttons, is there any piece of clothing on her that is not overwhelmingly black? The hairband on her head is black, the hat in her right hand is black, and the ribbon around her neck is black and white. Her gloves appear dark brownish, but it's hard to guess whether that's because of the light coming in through the side. The crinkled handkerchief under her right hand stands out, and it also tells us that she might have cried prior to this scene as well. But is she going to a funeral or returning from one? We don't know. If we look closely, we can see a tear on her cheek. It could be the work of grief alone, or a combination of grief and unwanted advances from a man on her shoulder. We are thrown into a moment, helpless and with little explanation, something akin to the girl's experience. The tear she sheds is marvelously painted. It sticks out from afar and is treated almost like the main character of the picture. Considering her age, it seems slightly improbable that she's mourning a spouse. An educated guess would be that she's lost one or both of her parents. The coin purse that she tightly grips with her left hand may offer some credence to that idea. The girl's nervous stare is targeted toward us or someone sitting right beside us. While breaking the fourth wall is often treated as a new idea or the invention of artists like Brecht and Goddard, it was actually present in painting for years. Portraits are a prime example, but outside of them, one would sometimes come across figures who seem to acknowledge the presence of an onlooker, just like this girl. One could feel her appealing for an intervention by a third party, since the irritating gentleman is not going to stop by himself. Speaking of the irritating gentleman, isn't irritating gentleman an oxymoron? How can one be gentle and irritating at the same time? It's hard to be gently irritating or irritatingly gentle. It's irritating just thinking about this, so let's go back to the topic at hand. Despite taking into account the third person at the edge of the frame, it is hard to navigate the layout of the cabin. If this really happened, the painter probably would have been sitting a couple of seats across from her, since we can see a partially empty seat in front of her. The fact that the girl is sitting alone means that she needs some alone time and values her privacy. 
The floral pattern on her bag might be a symbol toward her innocence, or maybe it hints at the paternal love she's just lost. With no companion alongside her, the bag acts as a buffer zone. As the excited man leans over the seat, he completely bypasses said zone and sends her uncomfortably leaning to her left. Little does he realize that he's crossing personal boundaries. The other man at the edge of the frame presents a completely different image. He sits patiently in his own space, not bothering or trying to impress anyone. To some extent, it seems that he's had enough of the man opposite him as well. Or maybe he's intentionally ignoring the spectacle in front of him. The irritating gentleman is dressed contrary to the girl. A white shirt underneath his gray suit, he dons a gray hat, a red bow tie. He is intruding on the girl's deeply personal time and has also hung his colorful coat over her seat. We know that he's too close because even their shadows have blended together in the background. Despite or because of him being well off, he has complete disregard for other people's property. Ashes from the cigarette he's smoking are probably falling on the girl's bag below. The same cigarette that would have had to pass through those waffling facial hair to get to his mouth. Is it just the smoking or do the wrinkles on his face signify aging? The difference in age between the two main characters is crucial. The glasses on his nose provide another hint not just toward his age, but also his hunter-like intentions. What's interesting about the composition here is that it is so tight and cordoned off. The man on the left is deliberately cut in half to accentuate the claustrophobia. It's hard to understand the geography of the room. Meanwhile, the closed window offers a look at the German countryside outside. It promises us an escape, but given that it is a train, there is no escape from this taut and creepy frame. For most women in the 19th century, this was a regular experience. With the arrival of the Industrial Revolution, more women were required in urban jobs than ever before. Not only that, modern ideas had elevated women from housewives to something more. They could go out and roam about much more freely. However, all these additions came at a cost. Men like the one we see on the screen here became more and more prevalent. Whether it be mistresses or random girls on the street, some men could not wait to do something adventurous. We know little about the man who signed his name on a box in the corner. There's not much documentation about his political or artistic views. But given how he sympathizes with feminine experiences leads us to think that he was a progressive man. This, however, can be misleading. There are many counterexamples in history to exactly these kinds of ideas. Take Caravaggio, for instance. That artist, interested in religious imagery, murdered someone in Rome and had to flee to Naples to escape the death sentence. Now, Waltz's domestic scene certainly inspire confidence in his sincerity toward women's issues. But wait a minute, did he witness this scene and choose to remain silent? He might have chosen to ignore it like the third figure in the background. He might have used it as fuel for his work with little to no regard for the plight of the young woman. Or how about this twist? He might have been the irritating gentleman. Since we know next to nothing about the man, who's to stop us from thinking that he wasn't just expressing his own guilt over a past experience? With no historical references to fall back on, it's anybody's guess. We hope you found this episode interesting. If you did, support us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more juicy content in your feed. Share any weird theories with us in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.